Hello everybody, so we are now at the COP24 on the Energy 2050 pavilion and we are going to, to discuss about, uh, let's say, the, the vision we can share about artistic performance and also the way we can reinforce education with some of our partners linked with the Arts Planet initiative we have designed, which is to create, let's say, a common feeling and concern about very difficult topics we discuss on like uh, climate change, sustainable development, hunger, uh, poverty, uh, gender issues. So all these, let's say, technical somewhere topics, but people suffering in the real world. And as soon as we go here for negotiation, sometimes f people feel very fragmented. They are not really concerned. So for us, arts has to be part of the change and can reconnect people to the global, let's say, vision that at the end, we are all in a common world. We are not sharing the same topic concern at what moment, but it can be the case sometimes. And on the other hand, we need also to reconnect people in the long term, feeling concerned and trying to take on board all these very technical topics in their daily activities. So we are today with Earth Saver, a very nice, let's say, team uh, working on this issue and they will explain exactly what they did and what they do about this kind of thing about education, artistic performance and reconnecting people with their past, the memory, but also the future they want to share together. And after I will also decline more in detail what we can do concretely to scale up worldwide, federating all, let's say, the will for people to change things. And this will be the topic of today. So we are here at the COP24 trying to make hearts as, let's say, a means to reallocate our feeling, to feel concerned about the global perspective of what we want to do by our future. So, Cecilia, you will be the second speaker. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Stefan. Uh, we're so glad with the synergy that the Earth Savers honored twice by UNESCO as Artists for Peace and a Dream Center. Yeah, the sixth in the world, dream means development, rehabilitation, education through arts and media. So it's um, very, very important and essential that right here in COP24, when we have to push for action so that 1.5 becomes the limit that we should not breach it because it will mean disaster, uh, destruction of life and no womb uh, for nourishing the lives of our children and the next generations. So as Stefan said, arts is a key because uh, we're talking of development, we're talking of fighting poverty, and unless we use culture or if it is absent and it is not dynamically applied, there is going to be failure, failure in governance because you have to touch the minds and hearts of the people so they are informed, they are motivated, they act. And this is the transformation we want. They say, change together. Yes, we have to change our minds, our attitudes. Uh, you will see there are films, uh, whether it's through film, whether it is through performance, whether it's through paintings, as you see in the back, whether it's through music, which we have original songs that really reflect the agony, death, and resurrection of the forest, the lament of the lakes, a rap song on garbage recycling and composting. You have to reach all sectors, the children, the senior citizens, the farmer, the fisher folk, uh, the driver who is affected by air pollution, and even just children, you know, you have to tell them that they become numb, uh, intellectually degenerated with uh, air pollution. So how do you reach the people? It's got to be the arts. And besides, you can't have all resolutions. Uh, it's wonderful we have the agreement, but how will people really know what this is about, how they're going to be worked out. So that's the whole idea. And war is part and parcel of understanding that we have to stop this violence against mankind and Mother Earth. We have to actually work for 
reconciliation and artists can bridge the gap of differences. They can provide a different kind of alternative dialogue where it is easier to embrace each other and to know each other. So we were able under UNESCO patronage to launch globally an international peace movement, not by force but by art and promoting SDG education. And we are with our partners, uh, you'll hear Chuchi, you'll, we are involved as well with Climate Institute, the International Theater Institute, which has 100 member nations. And uh, we are leading in the Philippines what we call the Social Change Network. And what is important is artists and in the legislative and executive endorsement, we had a Manila Declaration to have, to harness, to mobilize, to utilize, not just bombs being detonated, destroying, adding more carbon. What we really need is togetherness. Uh, this movement, and I'm glad Stefan said they're going to be uh, synergized with us because the United Nations has a blue helmet peacekeeping force. The artists, the teachers, the social and environmental activists, even the interfaith uh, leaders can all group together uh, and link together so that we are a rainbow creative army, not using guns, but using the diversity of cultural expressions appreciation of heritage and indigenous traditions that can be utilized so that we end conflict and we mitigate climate change catastrophes. And we must reach everyone, nobody must be left. And it should be inclusive, human rights based, lifelong learning and we are so glad to be connected with the uh, Arts Pavilion uh, Energies 500 because it, it's got to spread. We've got to contaminate everybody with the passion, with the perseverance to really have peace and sustainable development in the world. Thank you, Cecilia. So if you want to also give some speech about what you are doing, why we are, you are also partner of this big initiative, and what can be your, your vision of the next steps. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Cecilia. This is Deborah Boudreau. I'm on behalf of Buddha Tsuji Foundation, and also our founder, Master Zheng Yan, and the whole team is here. This is the um, second time we come back to Poland since the climate change COP20 um, in the WASA. So this is a very good opportunity. On the screen, you can show the arts is so important. Through the arts, we bring the community together and the, also the arts per bring people together. All the volunteers mobilize together and then try to pay the respect to Mother Earth. The Mother Earth is suffering, and during the COP24, we have so many um, policy procedures, so many different entities. Everybody get together here to share what direction we should go. However, the most important is started from ourselves. So the volunteer, every day they practice, they go to different locations and to collect the trash, to bring the trash into more powerful materials. So through the sign language and through the sutra practice, we are talking about we can practice our self daily. And through the arts, the sign language arts, no matter it's charity, healthcare, medical, education, humanitarian, and also so many disaster right now, and also environmental wellness, most important when people need marrow donor registry and community volunteers. Everybody we can mobilize here to promote. So you can see the big love. This big love is made by plastic waste and hand carried by Dr. Lin from our Dalin Hospital. And the 
plastic waste really can become an art. So while you are doing environmental awareness, the love is right here. And who we are, we started 53 years ago with the bamboo bank. The bamboo bank to put a penny into the bank every day. So you make a good, de good wish and good deed. And this is the way we started our foundation. And this is the way we started collect the trash into gold. Gold into a spirit, spirit around the world to share the compassion. And this is sunglasses and made by plastic bottle too. So that's all the, all the trash. How you, yeah, soft, no, directly put on. Directly put on, soft on, see? See, this is made by plastic bottle. So this is, yeah, cradle cre to cradle, recycle to recycle, right. And then this one is also made by plastic bottle. One more photo. He wants you to put it in. One more photo. <laughs> See, this is so nice. That's the efforts. That's the beauty. So this is also made by plastic bottle. All the warm stuff. Okay. But you see the screen. The volunteer, they practice. They practice the sutra and during the recyc recycling process. So it's not just saying um, you just pick up the trash. No. You, during you pick up the trash, that's part of meditation, that's part of mental health. So we are very, very grateful we can be here today to demonstrate the outcome. So everybody, the energy 2050, even though it's 2050, but have to start it now. And that arts planet is so important. So we have to collect our collective ideas to show the outcome together. So, Tsuji, serving with compassion, relief with joy. We are very happy to be your partners. Thank you so much. I think I, I will add something because now we, we go deep in the discussion because at the end, we have, what, what I really think is very important is first to have this passion. This is very important. Second words, I would say which is very, very important is also compassion. And from my perspective, our main challenge today, and this is exactly what we are doing as Energy 2050 in our daily professional activities, because at the end, we are very technical. We are dealing with negotiation, we are supporting government with our INDC, we are doing projects to be funded by Green Climate Fund and some others. So at the end, we really work daily on the ground. And it's very challenging, it's toughy. Uh, my main concern, and I think this kind of discussion and partnership makes sense, why? Because we do not need to focus on the citizens which are already involved. Because they are involved. They start to be involved, to be concerned, it's good. They, they still need to continue. My main objective today is, and this is why Arts Planet is a citizen and artistic initiative. Mm -hmm. And citizen is the main challenge. Why? Because if you want people to feel concerned, they need at least to understand. Yes. And I know that Cecilia will speak about the memory, and for us also it is very important. We are here in Poland, there is Auschwitz, there is different, very dark place of the world. This is a history, we, don't, we are not blaming anyone, because today we hope the future will be different. But if these guys need to be concerned about poverty, about hunger, about whatever, about typhoon, or whatever you want, people need maybe not to experiment, but to deeply feel concerned. And to feel concerned you need to understand. So people with the knowledge need to explain, not in a simple words, because it will say, you know, difference, no. Explain why this is so difficult to make the change. Because it's difficult. More, almost 200 countries with so fragmented and diverse interests, yeah. it makes no sense. Seven billion humans, it makes no sense, because seven different interests. And we need to have one common interest, even if we have different benefits. And this is really challenging. So Arts Planet, when we create that, it was exactly to make bridge between people. Because we believe if we have something here in the stomach, or let's say the hurt, but I would say I don't want to make you know, love, just speak here. If you have something here, you can feel concerned in the long track. If it is only here, it's forget. Because you will have emotion, you see someone, someone dying, some, someone with suffering, you say, oh yes, it's very bad.
But if you have something here, and normally, we, for gender issue, for example, nobody needs to hurt someone. You don't need to discuss that. But if you need to educate someone not to hurt a woman, it makes no sense. Because it has to be from here. If you need someone not to hurt her mother, make no sense. You need to feel concerned, and like that, in a long track, you can be part of the change. So the story we are writing here, for me, is almost at the same level than the negotiation process. Because we need our activities to be endorsed by all citizens. Yes. Arts, education, the guys with suffering, the blind, the whatever, all the guys which are abroad. And you know, sometimes besides the development, we need to make them comfortable with what's doing here to make some bridge. And it is very challenging. So this is why passion, hard work, <laughs> try to advocate, to explain, to testimony, to, to train, it's very crucial. So this is why I really think this kind of coalition, because at the end it has a citizen coalition. Like you say, a peace force, this is absolutely clear. This is a peace force. So I'm very glad you are here. And so now we can more explain maybe in details what are our strategy to scale up the process. So if you want to go, Cecilia. Okay. Um, I, I believe uh, there is a UNESCO commission in every country. Uh, we in the artist group, the performing arts group and literary arts group, uh, have also what you call different associations in dance, in music, etc. If every country identifies the volunteers who will be involved in using their talent, their artistic imagination, drawing itself as a mirror of what is happening, what is the problem, being able to show what could be the armor to fight the problems, whether it's drugs, whether it is terrorism, uh, whether it's the degradation really of the environment, the poisoned waters and, and the catastrophic gigatons of carbon up in the air, that we have to be the one, each one cuts their own carbon footprint. They think about it. So if this is spread out, if, if all artistic creations have a focus on, as you said, letting people understand, popularizing science, making them understand that by throwing your garbage just there and not working out, by telling them that, like what we said, we have what we call a creative enterprise of recycling arts, as was shown, as you know, we had what we called, it was very famous, Smoky Mountain. It was a mountain of garbage, but it was moved to break down the garbage. We started by teaching the young kids, and they developed themselves into a performing group called the Children of Mother Earth. They are now part of a leadership. They themselves, through their performances, and understanding what it is you have to do to save Mother Earth, they have started together with Father Beltran, who is, which is part of the interfaith dialogue uh, Senator Alvarez had started. Uh, the idea is even the bishops and the parishes, the youth are doing the replanting. It's called the Bamboo, bamboo High Challenge that you do this, you are given the seedlings by, it's a partnership with the environment uh, thing, and they regreen the denuded forest, the watersheds. Everybody can do something. Can you imagine if every child in the school is given this kind of passion, this vision, this conscience, what they have even as young people, they can share into their neighborhood, into their community. And the motive force, you know, it, it's not the bullets, it's the artists. If they conscientize, if they show, give you the memory, give you the vision, give you the tools, you empower them. We were training blind people instead of begging in the streets, they can perform and earn a livelihood. 
uh, they themselves bring hope to all the victims who have trauma and they feel instead of being suicidal, they are inspired. If this blind, this crippled, this armless, together showing that they can overcome, it is the spirit, and, and to get rid of greed and apathy and change it with caring, compassion. If every country has this core of volunteers, the Rainbow Creative Army, and we're all together, we can change the world. That's where the change will happen. You have to feel, you have to think, and Stefan says you have to understand. You have to share, you have to treasure life. You don't destroy life, you nourish life. So if we have that army between all the different sectors, uh, that, I think, is what, because look at all the documents here. How will the driver understand it? How will the fisherman understand it? We have to transmit it in cultural symbols that they understand so they are moved. We are using soap opera on the, the soap drama to make people understand uh, the sustainable development goals. Uh, with the paintings, the collection, we were victims of an assault, of terrorism. But after a while, you forget, especially typhoons. We have 20 typhoons minimum. <laughs> and then, ah, it's over, you forget, and you go back to your old habit. You have to really begin to make a difference, that one person can make a difference. Every little ripple can become the big waves. We should be the tsunami of change. And the artists can be the conscientizing force of the world. Just to make the bridge, when you say, oh, the driver can understand, I will ask my colleague, uh, Laurence, Laurence, tu, tu peux me passer un guide des négociations? Un guide des négociations. I will ask my colleague to bring the master pitch, because we are writing for the Francophony Networks, the guide for negotiation. And I will ask everybody here, can one of us, I am the main author, can one of us, can understand what is inside? This is a negotiation, no. This is just the sum up for the negotiation. And after you have thousands of pages to go in detail, which are negotiated here. So even me, I am the main author. I am not sure to understand everything because it is so fragmented, so complex, and so connected to some other agenda, the urban one, the SDG one, and some additional one. So at the end, it's really crazy. So when we say we need to make people understand, we also need ourselves to understand. And this is why feeling concerned is a bridge. Because if I don't understand why people in Philippines are suffering about Tiffin, I never experiment a Tiffin. I never experiment anger. So how can I feel concerned? So just making the thing inside to say, yes, I can be, but the story is true. So the same perception makes the bridge. Otherwise, nobody can understand that. It's too complex. And nobody can understand Typhon, even his experiment. So this is why we need to reconnect things. It is really dramatic. It is too complex. But that's the world. So we need that. So, yeah, yes. ab absolutely right. Um, when I saw the whole books, I say, oh my God, for two weeks, you expected everybody to understand that? That's definitely not. <laughs> so what we can do, this strategy, um, Cecile is absolutely correct. We need to use the common language, the vocabulary for the general public to be aware. So you see this one, this is L-O-V-E, love. In the between, you have somatic, but the most important on the bottom, human being with the heart so what is the strat yeah what is the strategy the strategy should be going to the community mobilize so you create a new sentence called recycling art <laughs> right that's recycling art which says there is money in trash yes. you're not just seeing it but you have to be able 
It's a rap song that if, if everybody does this in the canteen, in, in, in restaurants, etc., it's, it's going to give you the discipline. Right. See, that's why this time when we are here, there's so many young generation come to us. They say, we have so many friends, they have problem. How can we bring those young generations together? On the screen, you can see that's the refugee we have in Turkey, Istanbul. And what you see the kids, they feel hopeless. What we do, we organize the local volunteers. They help to do the distributions. So that the young generations can have a chance for participate. You engage them, you empower them. So like Ali, he's 11 years old. Every day he need to go to work. He cannot go to school. So he want to go to school because without education, he cannot go home. And the students in the school, every day we, our founder, Master Zhang Yan, very generously, we built it up the school for them. Why? Because education is so important. So when we talk about recycling arts, that is empower them. They can see their accountability, what they produce, so they can see their future. So how to mobilize each country, really hands on to do recycling. And through the recycling, to bring the community together, to right and to bring all walks of life together. That is so powerful. And besides the recycling arts, there's a very good component for mental health. When you do the same actions, you collect the trash, you give them repeat exercise, and you leading them to do mindfulness. So that's a lot of arts, no matter it's healthcare arts, educational arts, compassion arts, it's right there to bring community together. I think it's a very good example. And I want also to add something because both of uh, you were saying, and I think it's very important. At the end, we are not speaking about something which creates problems. Because when you, the example of waste, it's they create value. And what is a very funny story is at the end, Everything we need to push on the agenda is creating value. Economic value, social value, and also environmental value. And this is very funny because at the end, if we go on the opposite side, we depreciate everything. So this is why we are not advocating for something to be, you know, like a global concern outside of themselves. We speak about the real world, and these guys create value, create employment, create something to be better, you know, for many things, pollution. And at the end, this is a circular, you know, approach that it makes sense. This is why it's so positive to do that besides the technical issue, because we are not speaking about the dreaming position. We are speaking about the real, let's say, credible world to make value for everyone. This is why it is so important. It's important is based on we are civil society and we are citizens. So citizens, we care for our communities and through the different programs, the daily life programs, you implement to become a global citizen to support SDG. So when we talk about 2020, 2030, 2050, the collective efforts will be our outcome. So we can hold it 1.5. However, everybody have to have one mindset. Like we are here, we see the children go to school. And we, but when we come over here, we go to the cafeteria, we create a lot of materials, more than 1.5. So how can we go back to support it? So plant-based diet is so critical. It's very, very important. So many data here, it's been sharing and talking. But are we put into action? That's the key area. So we've been discussed policy, flexibility, boundary, but we need to come back. When are we going to address the issue? When are we going to take the action? So that's so important. Yeah. Cecilia? Yeah, on the issue of uh, value and the feeling, as you said, 
a lot of um, the difficulties that people encounter is, uh, as you said, the value of tolerance is important as well. For you to respect, uh, I mean, we can have different uh, attitudes and minds about certain things, but there is a common denominator. We're all human. I, I will tell you why, uh, personally, I am against war, because I am a posthumous baby. I never saw my father. He died as a guerrilla fighter during the Japanese occupation. So you can see, it was normal for me to hate the Japanese because I lost my father. I never saw him. And my mother used to tell me, do not cry, your father died so you would be born free. That was an important mindset given to me. That's why I'm a volunteer working for peace, for everything. Because you have to love. You love your country. You love the world. And so you don't want it to be destroyed. And it was through arts, because I was working in exile as we fought the dictatorship. Uh, we worked in exile, and I worked in La Mama Theater. There were so many Japanese artists and all other artists of different cultures. And because there was this encounter, this appreciation and learning, it healed my, my angst, my anger. I could embrace them. And then in uh, UNESCO, it was the Japanese director general who honored collectively persons with disabilities that we call handicapable as artists for peace. So you can see how there was a healing through the arts. And, and that is the bridge uh, that is necessary. You can't just say stop the war or you have to do the bridging, the instrumentation that will do the healing, that will provide the path for reconciliation. It is so important from Manila, we went to Cartagena in Colombia, another partner which you really should be involved because they're involved with us, is what you call the social um, SSCC, the Social C uh, Council for South-South Dialogue. Because it's important that, you know, we don't just think, especially those who have been under a colonization process, think that everything has to come from America or Europe. It is important to begin to learn and to connect also with Asia, Africa, Latin America. In Colombia, the Cartagena Declaration following Manila Declaration uh, insists or uh, stresses the need to rediscover their Afro-Caribbean uh, links and heritage. It is important to understand and respect your cultural identity and respect everybody else. And together, we build a very colorful culture scape of the world. Not just one culture, it's multiculturalism, it's pluralism, and all the colors, that's why we want us as a rainbow creative army. Everything must be there, nobody must be left out. As the UN says, let's do it. No, that's great, no, this is very inspiring. So maybe I don't know if, one or two questions, if you want to ask one or two questions, or if, if we make a, a kind of sum up, if somebody has a question or something like that, about the Heart Planet, about the initiatives, uh, Rainbow or no? Okay, okay. Maybe they understand. Though. No, clearly, and I think they are also part of the story at the end. So let's see. So if you want to, to um, give some can more. Can you show the two boat heating together? Okay, this is very interesting. We are on the one planet and one planet on one ocean. Not one ocean, couple oceans. But you see this one? The people you've been asking. We need to take care of our tummy, stomach, but we also need to watch out our hearts. So this is a special sign language and vow practice. This is two ships on the ocean. They're going to come across, but you look into every movement. It's an art piece. 
combined with the rhythm leading by faith-based leaders. We don't know who we are, but when we train the kids, kids love to learn, especially different music, different artistic opportunity. You see, that's the police officer. So police officer is not only patrol the community, they also care about what's going to be happen around the world. So two ships, they're going to meet to each others. But the movement, everyone is practice that. And they practice is after their work hour. Now one vessel going to meet with the other vessel. And everybody show they pay respect to Mother Earth. The Mother of Earth is suffering. But when we sailing on the ocean, we have to have a very clear mindset. Everyone, when we face the challenge, you have to have a clear mind heart. Your heart demonstrate and leading you to the other side. When we talking about east meet west along the ocean with hurricane, tsunami, around the world with war, but we have a clear direction because we're going to go to the eternity war. So you see now two vessels into one. That kind of movement, that's the education we try to share with the children. That's the education we try to create. Kids love to learn in music, arts, and recycling. If we can create a special place in their daily life, they can participate. Then they have a chance to grow. They have a chance to learn. They have a chance to prove they are part of the global citizen. Thank you. It's very inspiring. And if you want also to make some no, summarize about the discussion. We were talking about how so many of the, every discipline of the arts. Uh, we have, uh, we will show as I'm talking, uh, besides the ASEAN, we were the first ASEAN culture capital. It's so important that there is a regional kind of solidarity. Uh, that's dialogue is important. But more than dialogue, we did it also through performances where you see the commonality. Sometimes instruments are the same, rhythms are the same. Uh, the very funny thing, we worked with the Basarwa uh, uh, indigenous people in the Kalahari Desert. We brought them together. And they look exactly like our Aitas, our indigenous people, with the black kinky hair, short, same instrument. That's Africa, and we're in Asia. How did this common denominator occur? It would never have been felt if we didn't bring them together as artists in a close encounter. Uh, sometimes there are different perceptions uh, because of the Muslim conflict in the country. There may be some uh, kind of bias about some of the Arab region. And so by doing on radio a broadcast of every play coming from Palestine, coming in our language translated, coming from Egypt, coming from South Africa, you, I mean uh, Saudi Arabia, it was, people said, oh, that's how they live. They love like us. They suffer like us. I mean, they ha we have this commonality. We just have to affirm it. Uh, and then to appreciate the differences, but then to tolerate it and to talk and agree on really having a peaceful and a sustainable world for the next generation. It's important also to begin to uh, bring back into our consciousness the wealth of knowledge and wisdom and richness of tradition of our indigenous peoples. Because 
Sometimes they've been submerged. We have to rediscover and use it as a wellspring for new. We call them ancestral roots to new artistic routes of expression. And then you will have a fullness of identity. So uh, it's, it's so urgent that the United Nations uh, begin to appreciate we were able to put an arts uh, chapter in the Rio Declaration. If in the agreements being undertaken, they use the cultural dimension as an essential ingredient, if we as a collective voice can make the bureaucrats understand, because arts is the one that doesn't have any funding, if they begin to understand they can be harnessed as partners, the teachers to link them, their jobs of serving the people, then they will put some fund in it. Uh, will the artists be able uh, to draw from the Green Climate Fund? No, it's not in there. But if we make the policymakers understand, and uh, that's why it is glad that UNESCO gave the patronage, uh, our own president gave the endorsement, if all the heads of states begin to understand, and so we have to move to the UN for a resolution, it must be adopted, and it must be understood that development uh, does not occur if culture is absent as an ingredient in their planning, in their execution. So that's, I think, what we have to do. So we're glad that we've, we're given, um, well, media forum, and we, there is an arts planet to connect uh, all of us who are really interested in getting the documents understood, translated, and moved into action on the ground, as you said, at the grassroots level. And local government, everybody must be part of this. And uh, we're glad the religious sector is also involved. So it, it's wonderful. It's an opportunity to thank everybody. And the SDG 17 goal of partnerships is so critical. We could not have had this event in the Philippines that has moved on if there were no partnerships. There's Chu Chi, there's uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai also helping us, their International Foundation, Climate Institute. There's so many people involved. Uh, we have to fill it up some more. If we can connect with everybody, that is the key. Thank you for this word. I, I will conclude also, and uh, after it will be time to, 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 to close it. But uh, by the way, I think this is very challenging what we discuss on, because uh, again, the scale, scaling up will be the main, let's say, difficulties. Because if we, I, I will go even beyond. In our perspective, for example, the our NGO is not making any advocating. Can you believe it? Why? Because we think, and this is at the end I will reconnect with the both of you, we are not advocating because if advocating is working, as you say, to have access to funds, to change really things, and to scale up and duplicate, it will be already a good news because people are advocating on this issue since decades. So it's not working. We don't have any green light on any topic. Environment, social, climate, gender, okay. Some case, there is some positive news, but as the population is growing, urbanization is growing, resources depleting, so at the end, it's only red flag. So advocating, just explaining, we need to change because this is important, make no sense. Being angry, it's good, but at the end, I'm not so sure the ones who are angry on the street are the ones to change things. Because usually they say, we need to do something, but they don't want to do something. So our main difficulties will be to try to find a way to scale up and to be part of the change without any advocating. And the only way to be sure that we succeed 
is to take as the waste example you use, we have many gold pipettes, small things. But these small things can be applicable, you know, like a big puzzle. If you look to the small part of this puzzle, the small part is a common denominator. So collecting waste, trying to make some product everywhere. Doing something to make sense, small, small activities. Everywhere you can duplicate. So in our vision, in Agenda 2050, we have a big puzzle, a three-dimension puzzle, you know, like a Rubik's Cube. And the main important thing is a small denominator common. And if you add all these small things, this is a global picture. So our main, let's say, objective now will be to find a way to be sure that the common denominators were in position to create value on this issue. And if we add all this way by partnership, as you were saying, because partnership is a key issue, if we are in position to federate and scale up, I'm sure it can make sense. So this is why, and I fully agree, we need to be part of this big story. Not arguing, because why we are here, you know, you look to the, all this big pavilion. We are an NGO, we don't have fun. But we succeed to have this kind of pavilion with big partners. Why? Because we are doing concrete things. And these concrete things make them allowing us to discuss also about the global picture we think it is important. This is why we really need to focus, to try to educate, to make policy frameworks, to make good examples, to make financial schemes, to explain it create value, to explain it create employment, to create... And at the end, these people will be concerned. And this morning, it was really funny because we were presenting Arts Planet on, with the Fran Francophone Pavilion. And some ministry were explaining, you need to apply, can you believe it? You need to apply to the big African organization now because us as governments, we need this kind of initiative to make people understand what we need and what we try to design. So it's very interesting because this guy was from Niger, a ministry, and there were some other, from Guinea and some other. So why it's important? Because even these guys, when they are connected, they understand they are not in position to do by themselves. You know? For private company, this is the same story, but at the end they sell something. But this is the same story, they need somewhere. So we are the, let's say, missing link. But we are not here to say, hey, it's because it's important, no. Because without us, they will not succeed, whatever they want. So if we are clever enough, we'll make these big guys to say, yes, please, welcome. Explain the picture, because we need you. So, and we need to federate the good guys. We have the good vision. And this is why it's very important to be here at the UNFCCC conference, to put, like with you and UNESCO and some others, because at the end, this is only the good strategy. Working on the common small denominator, people say yes, but it's not important. It's even more important than you can believe it. This example, it's something very important. Can you imagine in Senegal, in Ghana, they make forbidden plastic bag. And in Europe, in some of our country, we still use plastic bag. Don't you think? This is not a question of development, it's just common sense. And in, in Ghana, in Senegal, no plastic bag anymore. So it's very it's, it's working, yeah. it makes sense. So why not, in our country, we still use plastic bags? So this is only the way we can explain. So, S yes, yes you, no, you, you, please go This ahead. is a chair. It's a nice one. One. And chair made by plastic cap. But the concept here is a chair with four legs. These four legs have to be balanced. Otherwise, you cannot sit on. So each leg representative one is party, the other is government, and then there's civil society, and then they have a global citizen. So you have to combine the four components, four legs into one, then you can become functional and balance that. But, the pro the, but we have to continue emphasize why faith-based organization, civil society, we need to be in here, COP24, UNFCCCC, because we have to share our outcome, our activity, our actions. They are talking about a policy, but grassroots already implement. We need to demonstrate to show them 
policy and implementation need to combine into one. The civil society, private partners, very important, but without citizen, residents, grassroots to support, to participate, you cannot do it. We cannot have this chair without 86,000 volunteers around the world every day to do the recycling. We cannot have this chair without a private partnership to do this chair. We cannot share with you if we are not coming to UNFCCC. So this is a very important interlocked, interlocked, interlocked together for all the partnership right here. So this is a chair can be functioning, can be sit, and can carry Dr. Lin. Dr. Lin can demonstrate, can be 350 pounds, and with a chair and table as well. But everything made by plastic. So that's the beauty. I just want to give you one example, very important, because Juliet, they are partners. We are partners. We, because they are very powerful. You know, she's representing. Can you believe? You know, she just visits us. You know the, the, green, the green panels. They are partners of the pavilion. They are USLG Africa. They represent all the city, all the city in Africa. Can you believe the network? So, and she just, she was beside, she, she's a friend. She, she just come because they want concrete solution. They need concrete solution because they are facing in their daily activities, citizen. Can I borrow you? I just would like to. No, sure, 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 sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Okay, this is the kitchen. It's, it's, it's nice. You know? It's a house yeah. inside the love. Yeah. So the love full of the love and compassion inside your home. And the home can be your personal home, can be your community, can be a country, can be a universe. It's how we create a safety net for everybody. So our founder, Master Zheng Yan, always say, if you teach your children good, it's not good enough. You have to work with your neighbors. You have to work with your community then the whole community can have a positive energy, the energy full of love into your heart. Thank you so much. So welcome, Juliette. You want to say a word, maybe? Or no? Yes. She, she is a very important lady, by the way. No, frankly speaking, it is not because she is a friend, but they represent really all the city in Africa. Can you imagine the number of citizens to be concerned by their daily activities, UCLG Africa. So if you want to say a word, I will be more than happy, Juliet. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Juliet. Yeah, I work for United Cities and Local Government of Africa. I'm very happy, I've been listening to you, but I had a visitor, that's why I had to attend to the visitor from European Union, but I was itchy that it ah. should go away quickly so I can come and contribute uh -huh. to this. Yeah, we are happy and we know what we are suffering. Do you know that because of plastic, bottles, rubber bags, and all whatnot. The flooding that we have takes lives. People die. Because those plastics, they block the rivers, and the rivers come back, and you know, gets into, yes. In Okra, last month, two months ago, people were waking up because the water was already on their beds, and they were flooding. I mean, so, because of plastic. And what we have as constraint is getting the, the companies that can recycle. We know we have to recycle, but what do we do? The companies are not there, you know, but we use a lot of plastics, and our governments are not like banding the plastics, so the plastics are there in our faces. Plastic bottles for water, plastic bags for water, we, because we have small plastic bags that we put water. It's quite hot in most cities of Africa, it's hot. So they put water, drinking water, in some little plastics. And when you do this, you drink it, you dump it. You do yeah. this, you drink it, you dump Go it. Away. Then those things litter the whole city, and it becomes a problem, a real problem. Come to Accra. You'll see in life how many companies are there to recycle. They're not there. A few, but the impact of the we are not getting it. 
we have just a few companies to do recycling and it's not enough. So we really, really want recycling. We are badly in need of recycling. We know we can get this. Look at this beautiful chair. I feel like taking it home. It's so nice. Yeah, and if I imagine that this is coming from plastic, I, 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 I am moved, you know? It's really well done. So we are saying that it is good to have to recycle. We are in line with your actions because we know the impact of non-recycling. We know that it, is, it will kill us if we don't recycle. And we don't have to. So we are saying that how do we get these companies to recycle? How do we get the companies? Or can you do some capacity building to enable some people to get into recycling? What do we do? There's a training. Yes. Thank you. Um, we have, we're going to have the first online Skype education to Sierra Leone, West Africa, to teach WASH, but we can integrate the um, environmental concept. I so, can be a partner to work yeah. on this issue yes. because I think it's dramatically important. So, Art Planet is so critical. You are trying to bring everybody together right now. Yeah. So, the Bridge is linkage now. Linkage. So how are we going to do that? We can have a routine meeting and we'll talk about that. To kind of right. You to work together. That's right. clearly yes. And online training for how to set up the recycling. Okay, wash and recycling education. And we can show the demo. Dr. Ding, can you stand up? Whatever he wear, everything is plastic bottle. Plastic bottle suit, shirts, and shoes. Yes, 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 yes. Everything is plastic bottle. Okay, so this is the demo. This is the true sample. You can let the young generation Juliet, be aware. You need to take doc doctor also in your country. Bring him with back the to Africa. <laughs> Bring him back him. <laughs> Volunteer, volunteer, uh -huh. collect it's, all the trash. Yeah. It's very good. And then private partners, private partners. This is a good one. No, no, I know, I know, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. It's it's okay. you know we, we know what we are and what we do. I, I will give you, don't worry, I will give you, I will give you. Because it's important. So yeah, yeah. The movies is very important. No, um, it's amazing what you're doing. And I don't really want to, you know, bring out my emotions because it wouldn't help. So what I think I should do is, um, um, on the 9th, the Secretary General for United States and Local Government will be around. Then I would need to know where we can, if you're here on the 9th, 10th, then we just catch up with him so you can have a conversation. Because we also have an academy, African Local Government Academy, and most of their uh, training is online. So why can we not do something together? You know, so that they, yeah. No so um, if the Secretary General comes around, then you can have a conversation I, with I him. The connection. I, they are just yeah, I will make the connection yes, again. so that, um, you know, we can, you can insert this conversation on this program. Then you come and tell him, and I will really appreciate if you can wear this same suit. I'm sorry if I ask you to wear the same suit for many days, so that um, you tell him that I'm wearing plastic bottles. and. Let him know because he would not even imagine that this is. So then you wear the same suit on the day of the, and then you do demonstration to him and say, look, this is plastic bottles I'm wearing, and let him see for himself. No, 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 no. Yes. Really. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I would appreciate if we can, you know, get get you into his program, then you get the same conversation with him because I'm writing, taking down notes so that um, we can really get a conversation with him. And why not partner with, with uh, the African Local Government Academy? So that's the kind of conversation that he will really be interested in hearing, that you have online training and you want to partner with ALGA so that this online training can go to all African cities and local governments. Then we see how you know, we can make things happen on the ground. Yes. Actually, um, I myself had a press conference uh, on Tuesday at 1.30. 
unfortunately you you were not there but um, we presented Tsuchi's recycling system and uh, recycling capabilities in that press conference and um, we actually also submitted this into the Talanoa dialogue which was launched under the Fiji COP in Bonn last year there is a research and and basically a summary of our philosophy and the recycling system on the Talanoa webpage uh, visible under the Buddhist Tsuchi Foundation tab in the how do we get there section and uh, we are we are more than happy to to present this again to uh, yeah. to uh, to anybody uh, uh, you you know um, because we are really looking for partners to cooperate and to roll it's this easy. out globally it's, it's easy it's very easy. in Africa so far we have a recycling points and recycling center in South Africa only and there's really so much more white area in Africa where we can expand. South Africa is not Africa. Please, well, let's go to Africa. <laughs> South, I always say South Africa is not Africa. Let's go to where the real issues are. You get it? Yes, let's go to where the issues are. Juliette, we, we will organize, when Jean-Pierre will be back, the sec yes. general secretary, we will organize a small yes. meeting together. And uh, we will invite you to, to make the show also because w I will take your details, but I don't have yours. So maybe, you know, Juliette, uh, and I really appreciate because Juliette, all the time, she speaks about very serious subject by smiling. And also, it's a kind of very diplomatic, no, but it's very important. Because, you know, when she speaks to governments, she smiles, she does something, but at the end, she makes things happen. So it's crazy, but it's working. So, no, no. Yes. So, to conclude, uh, I promise that Cecilia will speak about the uh, declaration, the Manila declaration, and at the end we will close because we are already late, but I think it was important. So you can, you can conclude by the declaration. Uh, well, uh, the Manila declaration is on the web and we're offering it to uh, um, Arts Planet through Stefan, uh, so that um, by April there will be the executive board meeting Luckily, the Philippines is now a member of the executive board. It will be put into the agenda. And by having everybody, uh, other countries uh, involved and in saying it's important, that will give us really the manifestation of all the various capabilities, how we transform people, how we empower them, how we transmit uh, all the data to involve people. And uh, there is one very special thing that UNESCO is concerned now. They call it the new humanism. Uh, I think uh, our paraplegic poet, um, his uh, crippled, has written this to express together with all of the paintings. Uh, there's a painting by Nemi Miranda on, on, on how children are the worst victims, uh, they become child warriors or they are orphaned or they themselves die so young. And uh, this is an elegy for conflict and climate refugees. Because it's all over. Uh, in fact, it is an issue right now in America, everywhere in Europe, uh, even uh, us in Asia. I will just uh, quote a little and I think it it summarizes what we discussed. Mm. Um, the climate conflict refugee, a victim of both withering war and worsening weather. So much death and desolation consigns the earth to oblivion and mankind to extinction. We are in dire need of conscience in renewal with compassion in revival to bury the twin sins of apathy and greed. In the name of survival, the people need to bend a knee to earth and mother nature so the planet need not break its back to ruin mankind and our children's future. And I think if, if, if uh, like we have paintings, I don't know, that done by handicapable artists. We call them handicapable, we don't call them handicapped. If they can themselves reflect on, on the SDGs, because you can talk to a bureaucrat now, corner a bureaucrat, 
if he can tell you the 17 SDGs and say how it's going to be applied. That's why we do a soap opera on it, so people, ordinary people can understand how they can connect, what it means to them, what they must do, what they can work out. And you need to reach everyone, as he said. It can't just be the elite here, the leaders here. It's got to be reaching every household, whether you're in the mountains or the coastal areas. You must be part of this human collective action. It is heroic to save Mother Earth. And we can all be heroes. I think that's what's important to, I mean, send the message. You can't just be pontificating. You know, our, the interfaith dialogue that was done, the churches, the temples, we are now encouraging. Uh, we, uh, this was initiated under the Climate Change Commission by uh, Senator Alvarez, and now it's being continued by our Climate Change Commissioner. We're solarizing places of worship. Uh, to give an example, uh, and uh, they're the ones doing the cleanup of streams that are polluted. So you can move people to act, to be heroic, to save Mother Earth. So thank you so much. So at the end, we, we will conclude. But uh, as you see, this is just an opening, let's say, process. And I will say this is a starting process. And uh, the next step will be even more important. So by the way, everyone here seems to be convinced now we need to reinforce bridge to federate, to enlarge. Uh, Energy 2050 will sign the Manila Declaration and will be apply also on behalf of Earth Sever to the UNESCO Committee because we want our planet also beside to be part of this process. And so we have also now this also partner, so, and why not use LGA and ALGA? So it will be definitely a good thing. So now starting to act, continuing to act and trying to enlarge and scale up. And thank you so much for this such inspiring debate here where the negotiation is quite difficult to, to go beyond. <laughs> thank you so much.